All right, we're at Western Iron Tech here today in our motorcycle power sports line. We're going to do a multi-series uh, video segment on how to disassemble and assemble this Honda GCB engine, just like many of you are doing in your Honda TAC training. Before we do that, you guys are going to see, obviously, our lab sheet's pretty extensive, 508 points compared to what you've seen on some of that other training. Uh, this is very specific as far as your entry-level training, so we're going to go through a lot of detailed questions that I'm going to work with you guys on. But before we disassemble engines, I want to make a quick little video about organization. We have here, obviously we know tools get messy and things get uh, going as we tear something apart, but we always want to have that goal that we're going to try as much as possible to take our parts as we disassemble them and put them into containers. What I don't want to see you guys doing is having anything laying on the bench loose. And the challenge you got to think about that is a real world expectation is that you're going to work with people with other benches right next to you, right? Is there a chance people get busy or whatnot and go and take a bolt and then accidentally set it on your bench? Yep. Possible. So what we do to prevent that is we always start with a clean workbench. Are there any extra nuts and bolts on this bench? These, these are the extra out of this engine, but uh, they're in a container, they're not loose. And what I think you guys would be best to do as entry level technicians, and for the YouTube world out there, this is a great idea, is simply take baggies and write things like valve, cover, or top end, or clutch cover, anything else, and then upon immediately removing them from the engine, just start putting them in the bags. You know, just start getting them in there right away, and you're going to have a lot less likely chance of losing parts. And then upon reassembly, it's going to be easier. Now, people think, well, I'm an experienced technician. Why should I have to do this? What if the parts are on back order and you don't get them for two, three months? We have a part that just got released to us for our lathe that we ordered last April, and it ju I just got an email that came off back order this weekend. That lathe has been a part all these months. You think it, we're going to hopefully label things when we took it apart? Yeah. A lot of little pieces. So this is a good way to do that. Uh, different size baggies at your dollar stores or Hy-Vee or whatnot. It's a good idea there, your grocery stores. The other thing I want to make a point of, not only on the containers, is some people like to do things like where they'll take just a white sheet of paper and maybe they'll take a cover and draw its shape out. And maybe there's different length fasteners. So what they'll do is they'll do something like top, and then uh, left and how it is on the engine and then they'll simply do something like this where they just poke holes and then they'll take their fasteners and just assemble them you know in the piece of cardboard or paper like that as a way to remember it some people will go ahead and thread them back into the engine I don't care how you do would you agree with me that all of those are ways to organize yeah. so you might find a way that's going to work best for you if you're using a method of organization you're going to have me on your side if you use using nothing you're going to get into trouble make sense yeah. well you guys also you know on your lab sheets here you're going to be checking each step you guys in the real world uh, youtube you could be doing that on service manuals where you check off each thing that you do as you go along with it the other thing i want you to do is stop at collective points and organize your stuff instead of tearing the whole engine down and then trying to go, hey, did this bolt go the clutch or did this bolt go the flywheel? You get what I'm saying? Small segments of organization.